Okay, today we are changing out a Goodman evaporator coil from the series of Goodmans that had a lot of leaks uh, from the late 2000s all the way up to around 2010. This one is a 2008 uh, warranty coil. So we're going to go ahead and pump it down so I can change that evaporator in the attic. Have our service tool shutting down a liquid valve. And then we will start it up and I will shut down the suction valve when it reaches almost down to zero. Alright, I'm going to pump down the evaporator by depressing the contactor with my HVAC grade voltage voltage resistant contactor pusher or stick as I like to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll have to turn off the camera and set it down because I won't be able to do this with one hand. You see the effects of it here. It's starting to fall. Suction gets closer to zero. I have to shut it down. So bye bye. I'll see you later. This is our Goodman air handler, and for some reason, this is the access portion here. They ran this suction line right in the middle of the access. So we're going to redo that. Uh, that and the liquid line is for some reason I don't know why. So we can redo that while we're doing this and make it a little bit easier to get in here in the future. There's a bunch of water in this. Taking the coil off, the lines are sitting up here. There's a bunch of water in the coil pan, so I'm siphoning that with this little siphon pump. I got a Harbor Freight into the bucket here, just to make sure that we don't get anything wet or get ourselves wet while we're doing this process. Okay, this is our old uh, evaporator in the air handler. They reused the pan, new evaporator. We'll be here aluminum in a second. Uh, these pans right here are real bad as far as getting water running around in them in this little tray and the blower being able to pick it up because the pan's not really sloped enough for the water to run off of it very quickly. Sometimes the water builds up before it can drain out uh, because of the way the drain holes are in these Goodman. So what I like to do is take two of the either rubber or cork vibration pads and put them underneath the ends of these, especially in left-hand discharge uh, on some of these air handlers. This one's actually that way in right-hand discharge. But it gets some of the water off that area, so you don't have to worry about it because it's wet in here from it picking up water and slinging it. And you can see water's running through here. But uh, just a little tip, uh, especially for Goodman, it has a bad habit of doing that. So, okay, I'm gonna go get a new evaporator. All right, our aluminum evaporator is in. I'm bleeding the air out of the coil, and I'm gonna go bend a piece that bends down and into here. And then I have to go take off the uh, piece that was already on here because they don't give you another one of these stubs uh, for some reason, which would be nice because they had kind of messed up the stub that was already there. But I guess we're going to cut it off and reuse it. All right, we'll get it fitted up and start the nitrogen and braze away. All right, it's all brazed in here. I ran the lines up a little higher because they were run through the access area and they came around the top. It's not perfect, but uh, it's out of the way. So uh, I want to step across the refrigerant lines whenever someone comes to service the unit. I retied the drain in, put a little access in because it wasn't one there before for cleaning and things like that. That's about it. No secondary drain here. Um, there's a flood control in the pan and there's a pan drain out the back. So it's uh, pretty well covered against uh, flooding and things like that. But uh, we're about done up here. I'm going to turn the power back on. I'm uh, putting a nitrogen test on it outside and uh, I'm going to tape this up and uh, then we'll get to pulling the vacuum. Oh and just so we don't forget, uh, we were talking about it the other day and Brad was commenting on it, don't forget to prime the trap. This is a draw through coil. Uh, the pans in these particular units don't drain all that spectacularly anyway. So uh, make sure it's primed up so you're not drawing air back through it and making it harder for that water to drain out of the air handler because it will flood and it will the blower will take that water and fling it down the ductwork and fling it all over the cabinet. So uh, just make sure you do that. Okay, I pulled the vacuum where I bled the, uh, I didn't bleed, but I uh, opened the service valves and let the friction back into the system. I'm putting uh, put nylog on both these caps because I heard a poof in one of them anyway. Uh, just so you guys can see it, that's nylog. Refrigeration Technologies nylog gasket thread sealant and assembly lube. And this one's for R22. 
and uh, other HCFCs. Uh, don't really run into CFCs too much, but uh, there's a blue one for HFCs, like R410A. So uh, that's a good look at it right there in case you guys were wondering. Okay, I got my target superheat. It was a 73.7 wet bulb inside and an 86 outside, so it came out to 28.6, and we are running 27.3, so we're doing pretty good. Uh, so we don't have to do any more charging, so we are good to go. I'm going to let it run for a few more minutes, and then uh, call it a day over here. Okay, here's my good deed for today. Hello, friend. Let's go on across the road. There you go. Take it easy. I'll tell you what, guys. That good deed moving the turtle across the road sure paid off. Because I went and changed the capacitor and the lady gave me chocolate peanut butter balls. And they are fantastic.